So, since my last video that I posted on May 14th, Bitcoin has gotten a pretty significant move to the upside. We broke out of this more local range that we were trading in. Uh, we took out the high of maybe this larger range. And price also has now gotten above the point of control of the fixed range from all-time highs. So, you know, a pretty significant volume level. And I have actually closed out my one remaining long trade from down here. I closed this trade out once we lost this local range. And I didn't close it because I don't think price can't continue higher. Um, you know, I think if we do continue retracing here, there's a good chance that we might just put in a higher low before continuing to the upside. Or at least I think there's a pretty decent probability of that. We could have topped out here. Maybe we actually do um, reverse entirely. I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, the reason I closed down my long up here is just because I wanted to take my profits. I was up pretty significantly between these two longs. I closed out an extra 5% of profits right here from this long trade with another 5% that I already locked in. So about a 10% profit on this trade along with uh, the 4% that I locked in with this trade. Um, you know, I took profits out here and then I closed out the trade down here. Now, unfortunately enough, I was talking about how um, you know, we were ranging right above my stop loss for these two longs. We uh, basically got a drop down, um, didn't hit my stop loss for either of these trades, but we put in a range low literally right above this stop loss and pretty close to this one. You know, I'm not mad about the decision to close out one of my longs, even though it would have still been open. Um, you know, you can't help but be a little salty about it, but um, I understand that I made that decision based on, uh, you know, what I've seen from ranges and what the probabilities are. And there's a pretty good chance that this range low got swept, even if we did see this move uh, to the upside right afterwards. And even though I only locked in an extra 1% by closing this one out, like in the middle of this range here, I made that decision based on probabilities and, uh, you know, the less probable outcome happened. We didn't take that range low. Whatever, I'm not upset about it. Um, I still locked in a total of 14% with these two trades, and originally I risked 1.5% on each of them, so a 3% risk for a 14% gain. I'm not complaining about that. And essentially, I'm just going to, you know, look for the next best opportunity to take a trade. If I see reason to think that we're going to continue higher, I'll look for another long trade. Um, I would rather do that than, you know, try and hold one long trade just to, you know, say I got the best entry, you know, say I longed 61k and took profits at 74k. I don't really care about that. I would rather take my money, take my profits when I have them, and uh, then look for new setups, which I can, uh, you know, manage, pick more profits out. And, you know, there's a good chance I'll be overall more profitable just, uh, you know, taking my profits when I have them and then looking for new trades. And the reason I decided to close my long out right here is because we did see some bearishness within this range that we started forming at the high end of this pump. So, uh, you know, I'll quickly go over that. On the one hour, you know, we took out the range high with some bearish divs with momentum, even slight bear divs with money flow. Um, not very clear, but the uh, momentum divs are very clear. On the 30 minute, uh, we see the same thing. We actually saw that as we, you know, started forming this range or right before the range started as we were working our way up to the range high, we started forming divs, uh, you know, really from this point, this is where momentum was at its highest, price continued to the upside, momentum began uh, trending downwards, but we did not see divs with money flow, only momentum, and in my eyes, this is not as strong of a div as if you saw it with both momentum and money flow. So then we went on to take out the range high once again, and this time we saw not just continued divs with momentum, um, you know, not being able to take out even the high that we put in when the range started. Uh, you know, momentum continued getting lower, putting in lower highs, and at that point we saw the divs with money flow as well. So, you know, we did see some locally bearish signs within that range. We then broke the range to the downside, and uh, I ultimately decided that I was going to take my profits there because I think there's a good chance we continue to retrace um, to the downside. And if that's the case, and if we are meant to continue up later, and if we're going to put in a significant higher low at some place, then I'll look for a long from that place. And if we continue to the upside from here, and if I get you know faked out here, basically close my position at the worst time, I'm not too salty about that because you know I'm pretty sure I'll be able to find longs along the way up. Um, I'll look for ranges to form. I'll look for other signs of uh, you know good local long entries, which could potentially play into the higher time frames so that's pretty much where i'm at right now i did take two losses scalping uh these two moves i actually just got stopped out for a one percent loss and uh, this was only a 0.3 percent loss um, i originally took 
0.6%, but I closed it out early because my idea, you know, really got invalidated before price hit my stop loss. So I'll close it out for a slightly lower loss. But, uh, you know, I am a little salty about this short trade. Um, especially if we just reject from here after just barely stopping me out. I'll be a little upset about that because, uh, you know, if I'm going to look for another short trade, I want price to move a bit more to the upside. I am looking for another short right now, but um, not from the place that we're at right here, especially since I just got stopped out of a trade. Because I do think there's a pretty good chance we uh, try to retest some of these important levels, like uh, at the very least the point of control, um, potentially the high of this range that we just broke out of. Especially since we saw bearish signs at uh, you know pretty much the high end of this larger range, um, I would say that this is a range as well. And uh, you know pretty much as soon as we popped out of the top of it, we saw bearishness on market cipher, and now we're breaking back into it. So you know potentially we just put in a higher low somewhere around this point of control, or maybe we actually start rotating within this larger range. In terms of more macro stuff, I think uh, the most important high to watch is going to be this high. Now uh, we already got above the point of control. Doesn't mean we can't continue bobbing around it. I mean, we've been getting above it, falling back down below it, getting back above it. So uh, I don't think getting back above it right now is necessarily the most bullish thing, especially since, you know, we saw bearishness as soon as we got above it. But um, if we can start breaking significant highs like this, I'll feel a bit more bullish. And really quickly to end this off, I want to take a look at the weekly and the daily time frames, see how Market Cipher is looking. And uh, we are seeing the VWAP start to trend to the upside on the weekly. Uh, we could potentially see this confirm either this week or next week if we, uh, you know, continue seeing bullishness. I think, uh, you know, breaking above this high right here uh, gives us a pretty good chance of printing a green dot on this weekly. Now, just to be clear, I don't think a green dot on the weekly necessarily means that the bull run is continuing and that we're going to break significantly above all-time highs because this is going to be a very important level for price to test. And, uh, you know, in fact... If you're looking at it from, you know, a bearish perspective, uh, you would probably want a green dot to print here for price to get a move up to this high just for some uh, bearish divergences to print as we take out the high. We definitely have bear diff potential here if we get another quick move up to all time highs. Um, we can see that on the daily time frame as well. And, um, you know, it will not only be a bear div with momentum, but most likely also money flow on, uh, you know, including the weekly time frame. Because uh, right now money flow is still trending down on the weekly. So potentially a move to all time highs might just be setting up more bearishness. Um, you know, that's something that I'm considering. But I'm not too concerned with that until we actually come up and test this high. And, and until we see what price is looking like at that level. Now, the daily time frame, something I want to mention here is we are seeing money flow start to turn to the upside. After we printed this uh, you know, trigger wave, again, it's not a divergence, but it is an anchor to trigger wave. We're seeing decent direction with momentum, and now we are starting to see money flow take a turn to the upside. Um, we're seeing the most uh, significant move to the upside in money flow since we crossed into the red. You know, This was really the only other attempt at a move to the upside, and that was very weak and immediately flopped over. Now we're seeing a pretty strong move to the upside. Now again, in general, I still think the daily time frame looks like crap. Um, especially with money flow putting in lower lows overall. So this isn't something I would get too excited about. But again, we've seen Bitcoin bottom when the daily time frame is looking like crap. I've showed examples of that previously. And um, you know, also, I think a move to the high makes sense, even if it's just to print some more bearish signs with more divergences. And other than that, I'm just uh, trading local price action. Um, like I said, I'm not really interested in swing longs unless we see a further retest or unless we actually break above this high, at which point I'll look for other long opportunities when they're presented. I think there's a chance that there could be a uh, you know more day or swing trade uh, short from this area. Um, you know, we did just take out a significant high and saw bearishness. Now we're breaking down. So I am looking for shorts from this area, but uh, I am going to you know, TP pretty aggressively. You know, Really, my target's going to be this point of control for the most part, and I might hold some for if we break below it. And I think that's about it. So thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, consider leaving a like, subscribing, and leaving a comment. I appreciate the support, and I will see you all in the next video.